Hey y'all, welcome to Kamira's Kitchen. Today I'm showing you how to make a easy Christmas breakfast. Baby, you can spend all night wrapping gifts and you can still throw this together and surprise your family. We are gonna make a sausage hash brown casserole, a French toast casserole. We're gonna do a parfait and fruit board and a cranberry banana bread from scratch. Now, first thing I'm gonna do the night before, I like to let my croissants get stale. I'm using about five mini croissants, but I'm also gonna add two slices of brioche bread just to bulk it up a little bit. In total, I had about six to seven cups of bread, but really this is a recipe you can just kind of fill out. Now I let this get stale overnight, but you could also do this fresh. I'm gonna add three eggs in a cup and a half of eggnog to a bowl. The eggnog has the flavor and the sugar. I'm then gonna put a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, two teaspoons of vanilla, and a pinch of salt to balance out that sugar. I'm gonna mix this together until it becomes a really nice and smooth custard. It's the next day and my bread is nice and stale and I'm going to pour over my custard mixture. I'm just going to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to soak up the custard and get nice and moist. If you are doing this with fresh bread, then really you only need to let it sit about five minutes because there's a lot of moisture already in the bread. Also, once this is prepped, I'm going to go ahead and bake this today. However, you could prep this the night before, cover it with foil and let it sit in the refrigerator. And then all you'd have to do on Christmas morning is just bake it that same day. So that makes this a super easy and it is less time consuming than standing over the stove making French toast. We still want that buttery flavor, so I'm gonna add about two and a half tablespoons of butter to add a nice richness, and this is going to bake at 350 in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. I am also going to put together my favorite, which is the sausage and hash brown casserole, and baby, it don't get no easier than this casserole. I have some sage breakfast sausage, about a pound, and I'm gonna add some crushed red pepper for a little kick. All right, but it's not gonna be spicy. I'm then gonna slide in a little bacon grease. Don't tell nobody, okay? But that adds a great flavor. And then I'm adding one onion diced really small. You really want the onions and the peppers to basically just dissolve into the casserole. And the peppers are going to give it that nice festive color. I'm gonna add a touch of Creole seasoning, basically just using that a little bit like salt. And I'm going to saute this for about three to four minutes. To add some brightness and freshness to the recipe, I like to add about two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. And then, you know, we got the red, white, and green. You know, it's all festive up in here, y'all. I just love it. A little dash of garlic powder will add some great seasoning. I'm gonna saute that for about 30 more seconds and then I am going to start working on the eggs. Now, y'all, when it comes to this casserole, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm about the sausage and the potato. So I don't add too many eggs. I'm only using five today. I'm putting in a little salt and pepper, a little bit of sour cream, about a fourth of a cup and about two tablespoons of whole milk and I'm gonna whisk that up. In my casserole dish, I'm going to butter it. Now y'all, I told y'all this was easy, right? So all I did was take some frozen hash browns. I just defrosted them enough so that they would come apart. This is about two cups. You really just need enough to make a layer at the bottom of your dish. I'm gonna put on a little Creole seasoning cause you know these just be as bland as, as whatever. They don't put nothing on it, it's just shredded potatoes y'all. Then I'm going to mix it up and add on all my sausage. You gonna see a thick, sausage layer, okay? Because like I said, when I have my casserole, it's about to meet, okay? And so I'm gonna spread this out and then I'm going to use about a cup and a half of Kobe Jack cheese. However, sharp cheddar cheese would be a great pick as well. I am going to pour on the custard. Then I will cover this up with foil and place this in the fridge. I'm gonna bake this off the next day. However, you could also assemble this and cook it the same day. However, you will probably need to reduce the cooking time if you do that because I'm starting off with a cold casserole. It's gonna take a little extra time in the oven for it to warm up. I cook this covered at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes. When I saw that the cheese was really starting to melt and the dish looked warm, that is when I took off the foil. 
Now you will see that I also cooked the French toast casserole at the same time. Okay, so my French toast casserole had been took cooking about 25 minutes. So I went ahead and took that out. The sausage casserole has been cooking about 45 minutes and I'm going to uncover the sausage casserole and I'm going to let this cook for an additional 20 minutes until the cheese is nice and melted. I wanted to make a really festive bread, so I am going to do a cranberry banana bread today. I'm using a cup and a half of fresh cranberries. I measured the cup and a half while the berries were whole. I gave them a nice little pulse in the food processor to chop them up, but you could also just use your knife and chop them in half. I'm then going to add two tablespoons of sugar just to sweeten them up a bit. Now I used the whole cranberries today because that's what I had and it added a lot of moisture to the bread, which was good, but it did make the cooking time take a little longer. If I were to make this again, I think I would use a cup and a fourth of dried cranberries because I really wanted those pops of red and I didn't get it as strongly with the fresh cranberries. So I'll put my suggestions down in the description box. I have combined my flour, baking soda, and salt. I'm gonna use three bananas that look beat up, okay? They look like they done talked about somebody mama and got the black eye, all right? So that's what you want to use. Now you wanna make sure they nice and ripe so they can get a sweet banana bread, okay? I always like to mash my bananas and then measure them off just so you know exactly how much you're supposed to use. So once I get them nice and mashed, I am going to measure out a cup and a fourth. And thankfully, whatever I had was exactly the amount that I needed. If you've been loving this holiday breakfast so far, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and also let me know in the description box any other recipe suggestions that you have for my channel. I am going to take my flour mixture and to that I'm adding a cup of sugar. I'm also going to add two eggs, half of a cup of sour cream, a stick of melted butter. Okay, y'all know we love butter down here in the South. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of orange orange extract. Orange and cranberries really complement each other very well. And the fruitiness that comes from the bananas, all those flavors working together is phenomenal. I actually wish that I had put in about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I think that would have just taken the festive vibe over the top. I'm gonna mix this together until it is well combined and then I will fold in the cranberries. If you choose to use dried cranberries, the flavor is going to be very concentrated so you're gonna get little punches of tartness and sweetness in your bread. If you use the fresh cranberries, the cranberry flavor is going to be more mellow and a little bit more spread out in your bread. I have a loaf pan here and I am going to spray it with some cooking spray. I did not have parchment paper, um, which I typically use for my bread so that I can lift them out. And y'all gonna see what gonna happen in a few minutes now. Ooh, Jesus. Now I added this to my loaf pan. I wiggled it to let it set. And then I cooked this at 350 in total for an hour and a half. At the 40 minute mark, I covered it with foil because it was getting too brown. If you use dried cranberries, this should take about 55 to 60 minutes because there will not be as much moisture. It's important to just let it cook until the toothpick comes out clean. I'm going to go along the edges with a knife to loosen up the sides. However, I ain't know, <laughs> I didn't know this was a little bit stuck on the bottom. So I had added my plate to it. And then of course, you know, you pray to Jesus and you know, you flip it over. Now I guess, I don't know, maybe I had did something. Maybe I had a little unforgiveness in my heart. I don't know, but the bottom got stuck. But you see, but you see, I wasn't deterred, okay, because I'm an old school cook. We ain't about to throw nothing away. So I took the bottom and I put it back on. I took the corners and I put them back on, all right, because I'm going to flip it over on the plate again. And once you, you know, let this set and cool down, you know, ain't nobody going to know. They're not going to know. They're going to eat it and they're going to be happy, okay? I allowed the bread to cool down for about 30 minutes or so before I went in with an icing. My icing is very simple, just a little bit of powdered sugar and some milk. And if I'm being honest with y'all, I didn't really measure, but I think I used about a half a cup of powdered sugar and probably about a tablespoon of whole milk. I am going to ice this bread and then I'm going to let it sit out overnight. I think the flavor is best when it is allowed to sit because all those flavors sort of come together and develop. 
Plus, this is something you don't need to do on Christmas morning. It's gonna already be prepared. The only thing I did was slice it up and put it on my board. Let me know, would you guys try this banana cranberry bread? I really love this. It had a subtle orange flavor. It was super moist. I felt like this was extremely festive. So let me know what you think in the comments. Now we're gonna start putting everything together. Okay, it's Christmas morning and our French toast uh, bake has come out. And so now we're going to add on some fresh berries. I'm adding strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries but you can use any berries or even fruit that you like. Then I am going to dust on some powdered sugar and that's all is needed to put this together. You could add on some maple syrup, but I prefer to just let people choose their own amount of sweetness. So I'll put it in the back near the French toast for them to grab. We're gonna put together now this parfait and fruit board. So first I'm going to add some bowls for my yogurt, one for another granola and another one for a fruit spread. Then I'm gonna take my cranberry banana bread. Y'all see he a little messed up on the bottom, but see we gonna put the jacked up ones in the back. See then now ain't nobody gonna know, all right? And then you just make sure you put a nice one in the front, okay? Family style, y'all already know. I'm going to add some Greek yogurt to my container. Now, of course, if you have a large crowd, you can do a big thing of yogurt, but I'm just adding a small amount today. And then I'm gonna go in with some granola. I like to use a low sugar granola since there's already a lot of sweetness in the French toast. And I'm also gonna have fruit. I don't want there to be you know, sugar overload. Then I'm going to add an apricot fruit spread to the other ramekin. You could also use raspberry or strawberry. Those would be great flavors to complement this. Now we're going to start setting up the fruit for the fruit board and also people can use the fruit on their parfaits as well. So I'm going to start by adding some grapes and then the trick to this is really just to block out the colors. I always like to have grapes because they're big and bulky and they automatically make the board look fuller. However, today I'm also going to be adding some peeled mandarin oranges. I love oranges in Christmas and this is really when they're in season. So I'm gonna add some little wedges in sort of a line type design to add a little bit of visual movement to the board. Since orange and blue are contrasting colors, I'm gonna put them next to each other so that they're going to pop. Now I'm going to go in with raspberries, adding that little pink element, and then some strawberries are going to start to line right up against the cranberry banana bread. I'm also going to dot some strawberries around other parts of the board. Now you can really use any fruits that you like. The main thing you have to do is just use different colors. To add a crunch element, I will be putting on some pumpkin seeds. This tastes great on yogurt and it's also just great for snacking. I like to add the pumpkin seeds and pecans to the edge of the board so they'll be easy to slide off if you indeed want them. As a finishing touch, I'm going to put on a little bit of powdered sugar on the bread, but that's definitely optional. I hope I've been able to show you how easy it is to put a Christmas breakfast or even brunch like this together. This is great for the whole family because everyone can get a little bit of something they like, plus it just looks beautiful. Imagine opening gifts and then you can also go around and just pick up your favorite thing. I think that is so sweet and precious. Guys, I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you for supporting this channel and I'm going to see you next time. Goodbye.